So in problem 2.2, two, two, we uh, study the complex scalar field. So this is the action uh, for this theory. We have two independent degrees of freedom, which we can take uh, as either the real and imaginary part of the field or uh, directly the field itself and its conjugate. And it's somehow easier to deal with that. I mean, the interpretation, uh, the physics interpretation is easier uh, to uh, evaluate uh, when we take phi and phi star. So that's what we do here. So the first thing we want to do is to uh, compute the uh, conjugate momenta associated to phi and phi star. So the one for phi I call pi, and it's simply the uh, uh, derivative of the uh, Lagrangian density with respect to phi uh, dot. So phi dot is the uh, time derivative of phi. So uh, the Lagrangian density is the term that's uh, in uh, the action here. So we see that it is uh, directly phi dot star. So this term here. Uh, the second uh, I call uh, phi tilde, and it's uh, the derivative with respect to phi dot star this time. And from the Lagrangian, it's clear that it's just phi dot, which turns out to be pi star. Okay. So with that, we can construct the Hamiltonian uh, density, uh, which is uh, simply defined as uh, well, the sum of uh, the product of the momenta and uh, the associated degrees of freedom. So uh, phi dot plus phi tilde uh, phi dot star minus the Lagrangian density. Okay, so that is uh, simply so if I uh, write uh, everything everything in terms of phi, so phi is just dot plus and the Lagrangian density is written here. I will decompose uh, the first um, term in, uh, in a sum of temporal derivative and spatial derivative. So the first term is uh, phi dot star, phi dot, and then we have uh, the spatial derivative and the mass term. Okay, so we see that uh, these two terms cancel and uh, we have in the end, so if I write everything in terms of pi uh, for the first term, uh, so phi dot is uh, simply pi star. Pi and we have Yeah, so this is the Hamiltonian density for the scalar, uh, the complex scalar field theory. Um, okay, so the next part of the exercise is to compute the equation of motion for phi. So uh, the way that uh, the problem uh, suggests us that we do is to use the Eisenberg uh, equation of motion. So let's just do that. Uh, so the Eisenberg equation of motion for phi of x dt is simply the commutator of phi of x with the Hamiltonian. Okay, so the Hamiltonian is just uh, the uh, special integral of the Hamiltonian density. So, um, okay, something important that I did not mention that I should do uh, is to have the commutation relation. Uh, between uh, the conjugate momenta and uh, the degrees of freedom. So there's actually only one uh, that is non-trivial, and it involves. Uh, so I write it here. So it involves uh, the uh, field X with its uh, associated conjugate momenta. So on Y, uh, that's also equal to the same, but for the other degree of freedom, so phi star and phi uh, star in this case. 
and that's uh, just x minus y okay so all of this x and y are four vectors so uh, i don't write it but it's I implicitly assume that it's a delta form okay so that's the quantization uh, condition that i imposed on this field so this is what we will use in order to evaluate uh, this uh, equation of motion so uh, the only term uh, that will be non-zero uh, in this commutation uh, relation is uh, the term uh, in which uh, we have uh, pi because of phi and pi do not commute okay so uh, we see from uh, the Hamiltonian density that only this term uh, will lead to a non-trivial result so i will write that directly okay so i introduce an extra a special uh, term and we have here pi x prime and pi x prime. So uh, phi and pi star commute. So we don't have to worry about that. And we can simply write x prime. And here we have phi, the commutator of phi and pi at x prime which, according to the commutation relation that we've seen before, is equal to i uh, delta x minus x prime. And so this quantity is just equal to i times pi star evaluated at x. And that's it. So uh, our goal is to obtain the equation of motion for phi, and the equation of motion for phi involves the second temporal derivative of phi. So using this equation here, uh, if we take the second derivative, so we add an extra temporal derivative, we actually need to know the uh, temporal derivative of pi star. So that's uh, what we will compute now. What we want, using the Heisenberg equation of motion, is to evaluate this quantity here now. So that's just the commutator of pi star at x and the Hamiltonian. Uh, so the only uh, non-trivial uh, terms that we will get are the ones that involve, uh, uh, so since we have pi star here, we need to have the terms that involve phi star. So there are two of them, this one and this one. So this one will not contribute uh, to our equation here. This one can be uh, straight, straightforwardly handled uh, because the term directly involves phi star. However, this one does not directly involve phi star, but rather it's derivative. So we will have to do an integration by part. So when you do that, you have two terms. One that is a full derivative, which uh, will actually uh, vanish at uh, infinity. That we can always fix uh, the scalar field uh, values to be uh, some fixed constant at infinity, so this surface integral um, vanishes. And the only terms that remains will be a term that involves uh, the second derivative of phi with a minus sign. So I will write that uh, directly. So that's equal to pi star x, x prime, and what we have here the only non-trivial terms that remains, as I said, uh, so this one will involve minus, so there will be our phi star, and uh, the uh, nabla squared of phi of x prime minus sign, and we have the mass term, which is just phi star phi. Okay, so we can evaluate that uh, now. Okay. okay. And the second term is simply So 
uh, space to put the index, but it's quite clear, the coordinates. And that is uh, simply, uh, so uh, that's minus, so all this, these two commutations are minus i uh, delta x minus x prime. So that is simply uh, delta square, uh, nabla squared, phi evaluated at x minus, so that's a i factor here, minus m squared uh, phi evaluated at x. Uh, so, okay, so now the equation of motion uh, is uh, simply uh, related to phi, I mean, the second derivative of, of phi, which uh, according to this equation here is simply the, tempo, the time derivative of pi star. So that's just d pi star dt which, according to what we just did, is simply nabla squared minus m squared phi of x, which we can uh, also write as, uh, that's nabla squared plus m squared acting on phi of x equals zero, which is a Klein-Gordon equation for a scalar field of mass m, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Now we can also do the same exercise for uh, phi uh, star, and we will find that uh, it is also um, uh, described by a Clyde-Gordon equation of mass m.